Then next on the list here, I wanted to quickly mention this. This is a weird one to mention because I don't think it really matters, right? But do you remember when the whole Daniel Lee stuff was going down? When, you know, the former creative director or fashion director for Bottega Veneta who went through a very um, interesting incident where, where it was alleged that he might have used some inflammatory language similar to what Joe Rogan's being accused of using, right? Calling somebody in his office meeting an, an N-bomb or something along those kind of lines, which is interesting too because it feels like because Bottega Veneta was so loved by certain people within fashion, especially black people they specifically turned the blind eye to it because they just loved the brand too much it felt like no one went to investigate it deeper no one or maybe because of the person who said it maybe because people some people don't like that louise louisano is it louise whatever his name is on instagram and twitter maybe because people don't like him they didn't take the allegation that he said or the allegation that he put out there seriously and they kind of just because they didn't feel like people followed up on it they just kind of you know oh he might have said it, he might have not and it wasn't as much backlash against what he said about Bottega Veneta vis-a-vis -vis what Dose, what happened to Dosio Gabbana, right? In terms of people cancelling them and saying, you know, nowadays if you see a prominent celebrity being dressed in Dosio Gabbana, especially from people on fashion Twitter, they always have a lot of things to say about it, and especially people like Alexander Wang. But for every reason, Bottega Veneta, people are, you know, those guys and girls I see, especially some of the, um, the black fashion crew people, are still wearing the puddle boots, which I call the nigger boots, right? They're still wearing those. They've still got the bags and the bomber jackets and the pants and stuff. It's interesting. They just kind of turn the blind eye. Anyway, it doesn't matter. One of the things that people like myself were accusing, particularly for, for, for doing at the time, I thought, which kind of kind of was to their favor, especially Daniel Lee, because it carried him a lot of favor, right, with the black community. I feel like there was a lot of pandering when it came to Patek Veneta, like clearly a lot of pandering, especially when you see the guy himself. Do you know what I mean? He doesn't necessarily ooze any kind of core he's not really about the culture really you know what i mean he just looks like a dork in this little ginger speckled dork right with a bird chest and this guy was now you know featuring all these prominent um you would call them you say non-white creatives that happen to you know they happen to cross paths with and kind of putting them front and center of his shows campaigns blah 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 and obviously it worked because when he then got accused of calling somebody the end bomb in the office, people kind of just assumed it wasn't true because he puts people like us in flipping adverts. And now we're seeing this interesting thing I saw because someone brought it to my attention on social media, the, on Twitter specifically, regarding Sawarski. For whatever reason, Sawarski have kind of pivoted and changed how they are um, presenting their jewellery by having a lot of people who look like myself uh, modeling the stuff, as you can see on one of these pictures. And I wonder, is it pandering to have people like this in these sort of product shots? You know, if you're not watching this, um, it's basically a really cool looking black kid um, who's kind of making this lucent Sawarski ring that's 280 euros only look incredible with what he's wearing especially against his skin tone and what it looks flipping beautiful the pictures are fantastic right the kid's well manicured he's got a grill on him he just looks great but I wonder is it pandering and if it is pandering does it matter like is this a is this a um, is this like a necessary journey in order for people that look like myself black people to basically have some semblance of um influence within the fashion industry this is how you get in when they normalize stuff like this like in terms of using black models in these sort of press shots and these sort of campaigns it actually serves as a net positive because what it means is that now this becomes a norm people then don't start to have quotas when it comes to runways or start saying crazy shit like oh we already have a black model on our books you know what i mean because they just treat it like hey can you present the clothes in a um in a somewhat authentic way can you bring it to life somewhere on the runway and that's about it and just continue from there maybe that's the thing i don't really too sure but i saw these pictures especially concerning sports girls like hmm i've not really seen much of this and it got me thinking about the stuff that i didn't like to see when i saw um elton doing the campaign for tiffany and co and i thought that was pandering right they got him to dress up in a tux and start break dancing in the middle of a flipping basketball court with some kids pop shoving and kick flipping around him just didn't make any sense it basically felt like they got the coolest black kid they could find online especially and basically got him to dance you know for what his supper i don't really know specifically don't ask me what because i don't want to say what i really think and get kicked off of youtube but yeah man it's an interesting approach i feel like um 
some cool stuff obviously here i'd love these ear cuffs i've seen rick owens wear a few of these i didn't actually know what they were actually, at first i thought they were piercings because rick owens wore a few of these um during the pandemic it felt like i always saw him kind of rocking these sort of things um is it an ear cuff no, that, yeah that is an ear cuff so basically there are ear cuffs so i don't know if you guys know they exist but some of them are just things that you basically put inside your earlobe this actually looks like it might be an actual earring oh no it's an ear cuff actually so why is it on his earlobe and not in the ear itself but usually people wear it on the inside so i've seen him do that but i don't know yeah maybe it's pandering maybe it doesn't really matter and i'm just kind of making a nothing out of something which is basically um I'm making something out of nothing which is basically the key of a great podcaster right is to take a very mundane topic that no one really cares about and try and stretch it as much as you can and fill in the gaps as i'm doing right now by filling in gaps but i don't know i saw it and i was a little bit i wonder why they're doing this is this clearly a way to kind of market to young a younger demographic to get people that look like myself to wear this sort of stuff because they know we are the trendsetters even though we don't make up a big chunk of the customers that buy any bits of fashion because there's not many of us especially in the western world um it's still no denying that our influence is outsized if someone like myself who i kind of count myself to be quite forward thinking and a bit of a trendsetter and making the move the needle move decide to put um some needle move i can't even say it properly that's why i you know i'm not a needle mover but if there are people that exist out there who are real needle movers you know when they put this kind of stuff on it's immediately going to increase the core factor it's going to immediately increase the desirability and then suddenly people that would never think they would need some Swarovski's crystals in their collection are suddenly like you know what that Swarovski choker is not a bad idea you know for 400 euros maybe it's something I buy for myself for my flipping birthday or something I don't know maybe it's a thing but maybe it's actually like i said maybe it's a good thing it's a sign of real acceptance when they start to you know less of less of a tokenism and more so of like no you're actually the best person to actually make this thing bang you know what i mean for real um uh but yeah i don't know how to feel about it i'm not too sure it's like being um it's like being a race diversity hire right i remember seeing that happening a lot in fashion just during the kind of the post George Floyd thing there's a lot of kind of brands and uh magazine publishers and whatnot deciding to invent these bullshit roles like racial diversity officer shit I don't know what that means it's like what are you in charge of the fucking playlist do you put on the fucking money bag yo on the on the Friday nights on the Friday just before everyone goes for drinks I don't really know what it means but it always felt like a kind of tokenism it felt like a token gesture like oh you're the black one you're the one that wears a cool wacky prince here's a here's a job that only the blackies are going to take but maybe just getting your foot in the door is better than nothing because of how you know in demand those positions are in fashion right everyone wants to be um, that person everyone wants to have those roles so maybe just having any role regardless of how you got it if you got it because of the size of your boobies how tall you are how good looking you are it doesn't matter because you know so many people want that job that you just take it and you just take it as you take what you're given in that regard i don't know i don't know but anyway it looks cool regardless most of the stuff's on pre-order Swarovski crystals look pretty interesting loads of things i'd actually buy myself um especially when you see some of the colors and whatnot there was one specific one that i like this yeah this um kind of little ear cuff that makes you look like you got three massive flipping diamonds hanging off the top of your earlobe um also top of your ear sorry is pretty pretty cool looking i'm not gonna lie it's pretty pretty cool and then of course on the model itself it looks fucking banging in it look at that look how good that looks and the braids too tight but yeah big up everybody involved in that one and i think if i'm not mistaken the actual person involved in this is actually one giovanna battaglia if you remember her now she goes by giovanna um engelbert which is i guess her um married name but she's now the creative director of swarovski so that might make a you know a point as to why they're kind of pivoting into pandering to black people which is not pandering maybe it's a cool thing i don't know what it is um obviously they've got the uh model adwa what's her name adwa something i forgot her surname but yeah she's obviously featured on one of the first campaigns of it so maybe there was a concerted effort to basically make it a little bit more culturally relevant to some of the kids uh what relationship with Jurek? You don't care about that. Anyway, if you're a career stylist, how do you discover Swarovski? We don't care about that. What was your most interesting thing you learned about crystals? We don't care about that. For your first question, what was your number one? Yeah, cool. For your first question, what's your number one goal to achieve? Oh, she designed some of this stuff. 
no wonder they look so lavish and chic and rich because imagine i'd imagine giovanna hasn't had to eat a flipping ham and cheese toasty in her life has she right she always has the finer things in life which again no hate congratulations to her but that's why the jewelry looks so um opulent let's say where is she to give a crystal cooler uh, uh, yes yeah, one um so yeah for this first collection what was your number one goal to achieve um she says as follows to give crystal a cooler smarter dimension i wanted to uh, i was going to to explore the beauty of crystal and how its magnificence um roots in fundamental geometrical and logical structures this jewelry is not on display of someone's wealth but their ability to express themselves in cool and playful way jewelry does not have to be pretentious i like that it can be fun playful and dictate and express the mood we're in my intention is to create collections pieces that are bold but can be worn in effortless way is jewelry for playful extravagance that doesn't feel forced or expensive so or expressive but it's expressive and original i agree with that i think a lot of the stuff that we saw here um just looks really nice and especially look this doesn't look too crazy it just looks a little bit expressive it looks like you're you know you might like a bit of fashion um it continues here let's continue there in terms of design process what did you enjoy most a famous jeweler once said between the idea of a piece of jewelry and the finished product there are like three liters of tears 400 hours of yelling on the phone and endless letterings etc and that's how i feel in every piece there were countless details to consider and the decisions to make innovation in mind the entire collection was an incredible challenge that swalski managed to bring to life even in the time of covid which is not a small task so yeah big up um giovanna big up this new uh, push with COVID I mean this new direction that Swarovski are going in um, it looks like it's going to work because someone like myself is talking about Swarovski and I would never care about them as a brand I don't care if they're pandering to me pander to me some more pander to me some more give me all the diamonds give me all the jewelry